Target earnings just crossing the tape. Courtney Reagan is here with the numbers. Court. Yeah, Melissa, so let's get through this. There's a lot here. Target second quarter earnings coming in at $1.80 per share. That's 41 cents above consensus. But the profit was not driven by sales. Revenue at $24.77 billion, below $25.16 billion estimated. Also slashing full year earnings guidance. This even after this quarter's huge beat. So it's now expecting between $7 and $8. That's down from $7.75 to $8.75. It's also bringing down its sales expectations to mid single digit declines rather than low single digit decline to low single digit increase. Target's comparable sales down 5.4%. That is well below estimates for a 3.7% drop, also the first decrease since 2016. The retailer says discretionary categories again weak, while food, beverage, essentials, beauty, those frequency categories, those were stronger. Digital sales down 10.5%. That's the third straight quarter of declines and the worst performance since Target has been giving this number. Inventory fell 17 percent and lower markdowns did help to lift gross margins. Operating margins also better than expected. But at 4.8 percent, that's about half of the level where it was two years ago at 9.8 percent. On a call with media, Target CEO Brian Cornell pointed to macro pressures, including inflation, for tempering sales, but also, quote, negative guest reaction to our pride collection. He also continued to say negative reaction to our pride assortment and added after adjusting mid quarter to address safety concerns, the business recovered steadily in July. I asked Cornell to clarify that the response by some consumers to the pride merchandise was material enough that it impacted sales. But then after Target removed some of the merchandise or moved it in some stores, the trends changed. He said, quote, you describe it very accurately. We only took actions in the month of June. We wanted to make sure we're focused on the safety of our teams and the safety of our guests. Once we took those actions and addressed the situation, we certainly saw things normalize. It's official, gang. We've had a massive Pride Month backlash as the ultra-woke Target reported their first quarterly sales drop, get this, in six years. Target CEOs openly admitting that their 5.4% sales drop was largely due to the woke backlash they faced in June during Pride Month. Hey, gang, it's me, Dr. Steven. This is going to absolutely make your day. As many of you know, Target faced a massive backlash for its ridiculous Pride-themed clothing line for children. It was widely reported that this year's Pride Month collection, I kid you not, it included items from a British designer named Opera Allen, whose works feature satanic slogans and drawings and ske skeletons. I'm not making this up, gang. This is not the Babylon Bee. This, is a this actually happened. Target partnered with a UK-based brand called Apra Allen to design its pride collection. And this chief designer known as Eric reportedly expresses Satanist views and incorporates Satanic imagery in their design apparel, including pentagrams and horned skulls. So, needless to say, the reaction among parents was rather predictable, don't you think? So much so that by the end of last May, just a week before the June Pride Month began, it was reported that executives at Target organized a panicked emergency meeting to address the serious concerns they had with these scheduled pride displays in their stores. And this, of course, was precisely because they saw what was happening at the time to Bud Light. And these executives were fearing a comparable backlash. I wonder why. And that's when it was being reported that the retail giant began instructing a number of their southern locations. You know, the Oliver Anthony regions, that old backward southerner conservative stores, to hide their pride displays and apparel away from storefronts due to the massive amount of customer backlash. So in a matter of 36 hours after that emergency meeting, these stores were required to relocate the pride merchandise to a smaller section at the back of the store, removing large signage and mannequins. That's how freaked out they were, given what they saw happening to Bud Light. But it didn't work. It was all too little too late. Word got out that they had gone full Bud Light, that Target went full woke, and part of that word was actually spread in song. A conservative rapper by the name of Forgiato knocked off Taylor Swift from the number one most downloaded song on iTunes with the song Boycott Target, which sang about the insane pride displays that they were setting up in their stores. And as you can see, the consumer backlash was massive. 
Target suffered a, a significant loss in market value. They lost a stunning $10 billion over 10 days. 10 bill in 10 days. Target's stock price dropped by nearly 14%. This is what happens when parents rise up and protect their families. And you know, gang, if you're a patriot and you're not prepared to defend your home and your family, you need to click on that link below right now before you do anything else and visit our good friends over at Countrywide Concealed and finally get your concealed carry permit once and for all. Yeah, if you're like me, you've been putting it off, you've been wanting to do it, you meant to do it, but you've been put off by all the ridiculous barriers and requirements, the pain, the hassle of getting what is ironically our constitutional right. Well, guess what, gang? There's now an amazing solution to all of that hassle, to all of that pain. Countrywide Concealed is the quickest easiest way for you to get your permit and the coolest thing is that the permit is actually good in the vast majority of the nation that's right you won't just have a permit to conceal carry in your own state but in 84 percent of the whole of the country as well it's as quick and as easy as just watching a video and taking a quiz and thanks to countrywide concealed your family is that much safer no matter where you go Getting a concealed carry license has literally never been easier. Click on that link below right now and join the millions of patriots who've taken back their rights with Countrywide Concealed today. Now, interestingly, it wasn't just Target that capitulated to this massive consumer backlash. Starbucks workers accused their corporate headquarters of prohibiting a number of their stores from decorating for Pride Month. Starbucks workers allege that corporate prohibited dozens of stores from publicly displaying pride merch and other pride affiliated symbols and paraphernalia. And there were even reports of some stores actually taking down the pride flags. So for example, in Oklahoma, workers were allegedly informed that pride decor was considered unsafe due to recent attacks on Target stores. Additionally, employees at a store in Maryland were reportedly told that some customers felt excluded by pride decorations, and so they were to refrain from putting any of them up. The ultra-left New Republic called it, quote, a stunning cave to far-right anti-LGBTQ fury. That's right, Starbucks, according to the New Republic, Starbucks is now far right. Let that hit you. But as you can see with the latest sales figures coming in from Target, unfortunately for the New Republic, <laughs> there are going to be a whole lot more far right businesses popping up all around them. And this is because, as we've talked about on numerous occasions on this uh, program, we are increasingly entering into an age marked by what's called consumer politics, where more and more people are in effect voting with their wallets. As corporate America gets increasingly infected by the woke mind virus, obviously more and more consumers want nothing to do with their products or services, precisely because they know that their purchases are funding ideological absurdities that run diametrically counter to their conservative values. And so what's happened to Target and Bud Light and Netflix and what continues to happen to Disney and a number of other major corporations is that they're beginning to see a significant portion of their customer base enter into a permanent boycott mode. You may have seen this. Bud Light is now admitting they're never getting their lost customers back. They're so offended they have so offended their customer base, and not just with the Dylan Mulvaney disaster, but those radically condescending comments from that VP of marketing towards Bud Light's loyal customers. I mean, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Bud Light has hemorrhaged customers, and they've concluded they're not coming back. And these execs are right. In an age of consumer politics, more and more customers vote with their dollars. It's too bad all these corporations had to learn one of the fundamental laws of the universe the hard way. Get woke, go broke. Hey gang, I know what it's like to feel alone out there in these turbulent times, but I broke free. If you too have been looking for a community with like-minded patriots who are serious about resisting globalism, building a parallel economy, and having intelligent and deep fellowship on a regular basis, 
then you've come to the right place. In my Courageous Patriot Insiders community, we're building a close-knit movement of, by, and for patriots who are breaking free from the outrage and despair cycles of the mainstream media and taking on the fight against globalism. Every week, I deep dive into the content I can't share on big tech and give you the cliff notes on the truth of how patriots just like you are building up their communities, starting patriot businesses, and fighting the woke in both public and private. All with a few history and political lessons from yours truly, of course. If you want to stop feeling alone as a patriot and stand together with this fast-growing community, be sure to click on the link in the description below. Don't wait. Join me and my patriot coalition today, and let's get fighting.